Hi, Lloyd Johnson of Woodturner Pro. Today we're going to be building a table saw sled that's going to let you cut segments for open segment vessels. Specifically, we will be cutting for the seg easy plates and we'll be using the stomper to apply those segments to a, an open segment vessel. If you're not familiar with the stomper and, and the uh, seg easy plates, I encourage you to click the search button and search for Woodturner Pro and stomper. And if you watch that video first, this video will make more sense. Specifically, we're using an 18 segment plate and a 24 segment plate. And all this is going to let you do is cut segments and slide them in towards the center and that's going to let them make a perfect ring for adding to an open segment vessel. Now, if you're using this 18 segment plate, you're always going to be cutting at an angle of 8 degrees and 5.5 degrees for the 24 segment plate. So I've designed this sled to make it quick to change between those two angles. I've also designed it to let you cut a lot of segments quickly. Uh, you'll be cutting multiple segments and depending on the thickness of the wood you're using it could be three, four, or even five segments at a time. We're going to begin building our sled by adding the runners to it. Our sled today is going to be made out of half inch uh, sanded plywood, 18 inches by 18 inches. And we're going to be using, we're going to be attaching runners made of high density polyethylene or HDPE. It's 3 8 inches thick and it's 19 inches long so it'll stick out from the, in the front and the back. We're going to be attaching it using pan head screws and these are uh, number 1024 and that the pan head has got a perfect 3 8 inch uh, diameter head. We're going to be using a Craig step bit and this has got a drill bit at the end and then uh, that's about eighth of an inch and then three eighths of an inch that's going to go into the plywood and through the plywood and then it's going to give us a pilot hole into the uh, runners and then finally we're going to be using this tap bit that's got a th um, just a drill at the end and then threads to and this is this comes from a kit uh, called drill master and you can get that at harbor freight We'll begin by putting a quarter in four locations and this is just going to let the runners sit just slightly proud of the table. Now I've positioned the board so that uh, the saw curve is going to be approximately in the middle. It's the exact position is not important. So now we want to clamp this so that it's not going to move and I'm going to do that using a couple of grip type and it's just going to hold the, this in place. And we're just going to do it by eye. I'm going in about an inch and I just want to make sure that I'm pretty good, close to the center of it. The next thing we'll do is Tap, add the tap, and that's just simply going through it. And the final thing we will do is we want to remount where we drilled the threads.
So now let's get into what is the heart of this video, and that is the fence system. Now before we begin, I want to show a couple of changes that I've made. Is First of all, I've raised the blade and have put in a saw curve down about 12 inches from the front. I've also added this uh, strengthening device, and that is for two purposes. One, it's to hold the two halves to give it strength together, but it's also going to show the maximum height that I want the blade to be installed, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So here is the assembled uh, fence, and uh, let's go over what its components are. First of all, there's the sacrificial fence. Then there is the fence block, I call it. The block is what's going to attach the fence system to the plywood sled. The next thing you'll see is that it's got a hold down. One of the safety uh, factors of this device is that I want your hands to always be a minimum of three inches away from the blade. Uh, the next thing is the fence, the uh, flip stop. Now you can buy a flip stop, but they're quite expensive, and you can make your own for uh, for not not much money at all. It consists of a hinge. It then has a block. Now I've used plastic, but you could just as easily use hardwood. It has in it a quarter inch steel, rolled steel bar. And then it also has another piece of plastic that has, uh, and again, this could just as easily be hardwood lumber. So we'll look at all of these things in greater detail. The sacrificial fence is uh, either three quarters of an inch or an inch and it is 16 inches long. Uh, I'm using a two and a half inch um, hinge. Now, the one thing that you will notice is that in the front of here, I've got a quarter inch 20 threaded, a knurled threaded knob, and that's, so this has been tapped using that same uh, drill master set from Harbor Freight, where this, uh, this is a quarter inch hole, and it goes three quarters of the way through it, and so this has been epoxied into that. And you'll see that it's not in the center. And the reason for that is by having it off-center, it has multiple positions. First of all, it can be here, and you'll see there is a little bit of a gap beneath there. But by turning it, now there's a bigger gap. By turning it again, I can have it flush against the, the, the back fence. By turning it again, it can be flush against the, the plywood surface. So just by having it off-center, you're just able to dial in the one that you want to use. I think that for our purposes today, I'm probably going to use this one that gives me a, a gap at the bottom, so dust is not going to be an issue. Now, this is going to be secured to the plywood using knurled, uh, threaded, quarter inch by 20, and these are two inches long. That's the reason that this is an inch and three quarters, is so that this can be go into threaded inserts that are going to be put into the plywood. Now, it's possible, since we're going to be doing two different angles currently, one of them is five and a half degrees and the other is eight degrees, it could, you could do it by having this give a pivot point and then just having two different places over here where it could be connected. But what you'll see is that the difference in these angles is pretty small. And so if it was anchored in, with a pivot point to, the, to the, uh, the, the kerf that gets cut into the sacrificial fence would be used for both of those and they're, they're going to overlap each other. Uh, we'll put in two threaded inserts for the five and a half and in a different area there will be two threaded for the eight degrees and those are going to give us two distinctly different zero clearance for each of those angles. So the question is, oh and then one final thing is the, that the size of this is going to bury the blade in there so I don't want to have to worry about the blade coming out the back and so that is the reason that, that uh, we're going to be limited to an inch and a quarter. Now that inch and a quarter saw height is going to let us cut multiple segments. So if we were doing three-eighths of an inch, for example, three of those layers comes out to be an inch and an eighth. So we can cut three layers of, of three-eighths inch, and if we do four layers of a quarter inch, 
that's going to let the, the blade still extend a quarter of an inch above those pieces. So we're going to be able to cut three or four segments per cut. So the question is, is how are we going to position this? Well, I've made that easy for you. If, um, if, if you download the, the plans that I've got for this sled, it has two pages that are going to be useful to you. And the first one is a full-size template and it has the hole spacing for the threaded inserts. Now in it, I have put uh, the saw kerf, and that is just going to be centered above the saw kerf in the table. So just at both ends, just make sure you've lined those up correctly, and then tape it down. Now, on it, I have put four marks, crosshairs. Two of them are for the 8 degree 18 segments, and two of them are for the 5.5 degree 24 segments. So all you have to do is take a center punch, and take your time, make sure that you get these right on the center punch. So that's where the four threaded inserts are going to go. The other uh, template, full size template, is for the fence block. And it shows where those two holes are going to be cut. And you're going to want to do this from the bottom. And the reason for that, in the event that your, uh, your drill press is not perfectly perpendicular to the table, we want to make sure that the, the holes here have the, on the bottom have the correct spacing. So what I've done is I've cut, I've cut this out into just the, the square itself. And so what I'll do is I will tape this on. And then I will do the same thing. I'm going to mark those two holes. And I'm going to do that off camera. I'm going to be using another product from Craig. Uh, which is another step bit, but this one is called their micro pocket hole bit. It's eighth inch down here, but this is five sixteenths or roughly five sixteenths. Now that's a little bit bigger than we need for the quarter inch twenty, but we want some extra space there just in case the things aren't perfectly lined up. But there's also another reason that we would use this bit, and I, we will get into that when I return. So I've installed the four threaded inserts, and what I used was uh, this product called an Insti bit, and it fits. It's got two ears that fits into the the uh, indents. So you just put it on there, and then it just goes in. And so one thing to to be aware of, though, is the threads come all the way to this end, but they don't go all the way to the end where the uh, the slots are. So because of that you want to flip this over and install them from the bottom that way we'll have more threads to work with and you can see down through the hole and so you can tell that it's going to line up perfectly because you can see right down there that the holes are lined up so now what I have done is I've raised the saw blade to uh, to, to be at that level that we did earlier. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first cut into the, um, the sacrificial fence. And what I'm going to do before I withdraw it is I don't ever want to cut any more than that, so I'm just going to, I've got this stop in there that will, that will keep it from, I can go until it hits that. Okay, so let's make our first test cut. The, ob the object is, you put this down, you set your, um, your, you put your stock in place, then you pull it out of the way, and then you, what you need to do is get into a habit of doing exactly the same thing. 
So my habit is going to be, I'm always going to have my fingers on there. That's just going to make sure that this is up and out of the way. So the idea is, is to bring it back and then what you're going to be doing, and I'm go, I've got this set for doing multiple, so right now I'm just going to hold it by hand, but you're going to, my other hand is always going to be on this handle. So. So let's see how we've got. As you can see, there's just not a gap there on either side, so that's a perfect fit. So now let's change to our other setting. And so the five and a half one is just perfect. So if you use those templates, it should just get you right and right on the money on both of them. So let's cut some segments and then uh, let's talk about some options on this sled. Uh, first of all, I've added a couple of rare earth magnets to try and keep track of my ruler. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I've just got three strips on here and I'm just going to cut the ends off. Now to, uh, to actually go ahead and set the, the stop, I'm going to just use one piece and I'm going to put it on here and the way that I had originally designed this is to have the wide edge of the trapezoid uh, facing away from the fence. I've done it, I did it this way because it's been my experience and when you have the wide edge against a fence and trying to use it against the stop it's hard to get to get it at the same place every time whereas if it was this way it always is going to go exactly the same place. And so the concept is you're going to put the stop down, make sure that everything is moved up against it, put the clamp down, get it up out of the way, Okay, so that all works fine and uh, you'll have no problems with that and as you can see going three at a time you can go fairly quickly. So one of the things that I don't like about these sleds is this clamp. You know, if you go from one piece to two pieces to three pieces, you always have to adjust this. It takes a while to get it perfect and if it's not perfect, it just doesn't do a lot of good. But what I was realizing is that if you using this flip stop, if I was going to be clamping one piece of wood, it just clamps it great, but just by holding it down in that position, have a second piece, no problem, third piece. So you, and the other thing is even if you have some short stock, 
and you want to cut it, you still have got all the control, pretty much as much holding power as you, you would with any other clamping situation, but your hands are still the three inches away from the blade. One final thing, I know that when we talked before, I was saying that the reason that I liked using this micro Craig drill to drill these two holes, and I said I would give an explanation for that. So here's the explanation. Currently we've got this set up to do two uh, setups, an eight degree and a five and a half degree. But let's say that you want to do another one that is going to be something other than that. So uh, here is how you can, all that you have to do is come up with what your line is, and you've got to position this. You're going to want to position it so that you're going to get a new zero clearance somewhere there, there, or there. But now you've got to drill two holes. So by moving this into the position that you want, and probably double side tape it down so it doesn't move, then just come in with this, the micro to drill in through there, and just go through it, and just, just so you're going to put a um, pilot hole into the plywood at both places. Then just take it away and take your regular Craig uh, pocket hole, the 1 8 3 8 and use that pilot hole to go through the board, and that's going to give you uh, the exact position to put additional um, threaded inserts. So I've made a couple of final changes to the sled, and I'd like to show them to you. First of all, I did make a second, uh, it's just identical to the flip stop, but this one is going to be used entirely for a, a hold down clamp, and it works great. One piece, two pieces, it just doesn't matter how many you put on there. It's going to hold them down, and, and still my hand is more than three inches away from the blade. And the other thing that's nice about this is it's, this board is now being held by this much room of pressure as opposed to just a single place with the clamp that I used before. So I'm going to like this a lot. I think this is really going to be a good solution, not only on this sled, but probably on uh, many sleds I make from now on. So then the, the next thing, I, I still do want to use the sled the way that I first designed it, where the long edge of the trapezoid is going to be away from the, the uh, fence. The problem is, is because the kerf is not parallel to the edge of, of the stop, I've marked three quarters of an inch on here, and if I, against the fence now, it comes into the right location. But if I take an, a wider board, mark three, uh, three quarters of an inch, and put it against there, it's off by a good sixteenth of an inch. So the, the answer is quite obvious, uh, is to have a dedicated um, stop for five and a half degrees, and then again for eight degrees. So I just put this, uh, this stop on here, and then used the sled to saw it off. And so now, three quarters of an inch on a wide board, is exactly the same as three quarters of an inch on a narrow board, which means that I can use a ruler on here. And so what I've done is uh, it's a plastic ruler, drilled a hole in it. I've also got a second hole. So if I switch to eight degrees, and I'm going to be using the different saw kerf, I just move the ruler over, and I'm I'm good to go. So I had someone ask if this sled could be adapted so that it could cut segments for closed segment rings as well. And yes, it absolutely can, and I've made that process easy for you too. If you click in the description for the link for the downloads page, you'll see that I've added yet one more page to the measured drawings. This page again is a full-size template, and it's going to help you with the hole spacing for, to cut closed segments. And I've added it for 6 segments, 8, 12, 16, and 24. And I've also added a line in there that is going to just be a 90 degree or 0 degree. And so, and, and I've also added additional saw kerf lines, so you can just pick the one that works best in your particular situation. So I encourage you to click the subscribe button. I'm working on some other videos that I think you're going to enjoy. I'd also like to encourage you to come to the website, woodturnerpro.com. There's a photo gallery and extensive forum, and it's a great place to post your questions 
and there's lots of people that are there to that are looking forward to helping you any way that they can. So again, this is Lloyd Johnson of Woodturner Pro, and thank you so much for watching.